I'm going to show you how to solve problems with uniformly accelerated motion and we're going to do it only in 1D to start with. In later videos I'll show you uh, some more complicated things like in two dimensions but for right now let's just keep it nice and simple. So remember what uniformly accelerated motion means. It means acceleration is constant. So this is important. So if we have constant acceleration Okay, so uniformly accelerated motion. Well, then we can solve uh, problems, but uh, before doing that, it really helps to know some equations. So often these are going to be called, well, a lot of people call these the four equations of motion, but I would call it the four equations of, uh, well, let's say uniformly accelerated motion. But in any case, if we have accelerated motion, and we're going to assume that the acceleration is constant, so it's just some constant value that doesn't change. Well then, whoops, I did not do a very nice job underlining that. I'll try it again. There we go, a little bit better. Seems I'm not good at drawing straight lines. But um, we have four equations of motion. Now, um, I guess maybe I'll just number them, so I'll call them one, and then I'll call it two, and three, and four. So there are four main equations. Now keep in mind though, um, these are going to be written in a format that maybe you use, maybe you don't. It all depends on where you come from and what your teachers have taught you. Because normally, at least this is, this is a common one that we see at least around Europe and in Canada, but it's V equals U plus AT. I wanna explain these because some people call these different things. So I'm going to say that U is going to be the initial um, velo uh, velocity or speed. I mean, it doesn't really matter. So we'll say initial velocity or speed. Um, and this is measured in meters per second. So this is your initial speed. V is your final, whoops, can't spell, final, come on. There we go. So final velocity or speed. That's also measured in meters per second. But keep in mind, some people, I remember, I mean, I went to high school in the US. So even though I'm Canadian, I did my high school in Colorado Springs. And there we were learning that um, the initial velocity, we called it uh, VI. So sometimes you'll see it written as you know, V with a little subscript I, whereas the final velocity was called V with a subscript F. Okay, so that's also possible. So just keep in mind, if I say U and V, what I mean is V I and V F, in case this is the version you've learned. Now the good news is that A seems to be pretty constant everywhere else. People always seem to call this acceleration. See, I only realized this when I moved it back to Canada and then I went to university in Canada and in Denmark and I saw that people use different letters for different things. So I realized, wow, okay, that's how they do it. And it turns out in different uh, teaching systems like in either the American high school system or the British um, A levels, for example, or even the GCSE British system or even in Canada or even this uh, international baccalaureate system called IB. They use different forms. So sometimes they use U and V, sometimes it's VI and VF. But acceleration, that's pretty much always in meters per second squared. Time, that's T. That seems pretty standard. That's normally measured in seconds or just S. Uh, so that's the first equation of motion. Now, it doesn't matter which one you call which. I'm just saying I'm showing you some different ones here. So we've also got that S equals, um, how does this one go? This is U plus V over 2 times T. So we better define S. And S is your distance or your displacement. And that's measured in meters. It all depends if it's a vector or not. And this, most people, however, call this D. So if you see a D here and VI and VF, well then there you go. These, this is just to sort of convert from the units that I'm going to be using. 
Now the reason I'm using these ones is just because of the most recent system I've been teaching in called the IB or International Baccalaureate. So I'm going to show you these equations in that form. I've also seen them at universities show up in this form as well. But I've also seen them like this. So keep in mind, depending on what system you've been learning, um, and depending on where you're from, uh, whether you're in Asia or in Europe or Africa or Middle East or North or South America, wherever you're living, you might have learned them as VI and VF and D, or maybe you call them U and V and S. Either way, here's how we deal with these. Now we've got uh, an extra one here. So we've got um, S equals UT plus one half AT squared. So again, if you've called this a distance, uh, then this would be D equals V I T plus half A T squared. So this is another one of the versions. And then finally, there's this one right here, V squared equals U squared plus two A S. Now these don't just come from uh, outer space, so to speak. I mean, these actually have a reason. I mean, these, any of these four equations works for accelerated motion, as long as your acceleration is constant. Now I want to uh, explain something to you though, is that it's important in 1D or even in 2D stuff. Now 1D is going to mean either we're going left or right only, or we're going up or down only. We're not going to mix them and have something, you know, up at an angle moving. Not for now. For now, we're going to just stick with the simple ones here. So if we're considering this, it's important though to define things. So I'm going to assume that anything going to the right or anything going up is going to be positive. So that's going to mean either my displacement or my final velocity or initial velocity or acceleration. If it's going up or right, I'm going to consider that a positive value. And if it's going left or down, I'm going to consider that a negative value. This is going to be important. It's important to be consistent with how you look at things. The reason I use these is just because when I think about graphs, you know, if I have an X and a Y, I mean, things that are to the right or up are positive values of X or positive values of Y. That's why I like to use this. Anything going right or up, I consider positive. Anything left or down, I consider negative. It's just because of how I like to look at graphs. So as long as you have these four equations of motion or look at them, then you can deal with all sorts of different kinds of situations. Now you can deal with a lot of these. Now these equations, like I said, I alluded to it, they don't really just come from nowhere. I mean, it turns out you can do a graph of, let's say the velocity versus time, just to show you where the first one comes from. Let's say we do a graph of sort of final velocity versus time. Well, it turns out if it's uh, uniformly accelerated motion, that means the acceleration is constant. And that means that this thing right here then is not going to be some straight value. Well, it could be, but we're going to assume it's some linear value like this right here. Let's just assume. Now the equation of a straight line goes y equals mx plus b, although maybe you've learned it as a c. This right here means your slope or your gradient, depending on where you're from. And this one right here is the y intercept. So just to show you then, if we have a graph of velocity versus time like this, well, then we can rewrite, uh, if you look at this equation right here compared to this one, look at this. This is like my y value. So you see this is y. So I'm going to call that v. Now it equals, and I've got some sort of value in front of the t here. So I'm going to just leave a blank here. I'm going to say blank times t, and I have some y-intercept. Now my y-intercept here, that's my speed or velocity when time equals zero. So that is actually called u. In other words, that's your initial speed. So that's why I'm going to say this one right here is plus u. Now what is the slope? If you remember from before, we were talking about how um, the slope of a velocity time graph is going to be the acceleration. So see, I've just linearized this. I've just written this as y equals mx plus b form just using this graph. And of course, I can just rewrite it and put the u first if I feel like it. Right? And then there you go, there's the first one. And it turns out then you can use these and then replace and you can actually play around with the different equations and you can actually sort of replace things either for u or for v and you end up with all sorts of different things. But at least these equations, they start from this idea here that the speed versus time graph is a straight line, has a y-intercept of initial speed and has a slope 
that is equal to the acceleration. So at least that's where the first one comes from, just to give you a chance to sort of derive these yourself.